All right, so um, I think some of the students will join later. Some of the students will join later. So if you are here, if you are here, then I think we can just proceed. We can just proceed. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to um, define an input device, uh, identify and list input devices, uh, identify and list input devices. Uh, you should be able to also mention the uses of input devices, um, and then also explain the functions of various input devices. Um, someone just joined the class. Um, what's your name, please? Can you hear me? Ebenezer. Ebenezer, okay. E Ebenezer. Ebenezer. Ebenezer from which school? St. Mary's. Okay, okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. What do you see on the screen? Objectives. By the end of the lesson, you'll be able to define an input device. Very good. So it means. Identify. Yeah, you are on track. Um, uh, Hannah, are you there? Look Hannah, are you there? Okay. So let's continue. All right. So these are the objectives for today's lesson, and then uh, we will not waste much time because of data. We will not waste much time. So as I'm going on, if you have a question, you, you ask. Is that okay? All right. Okay, yes, so sir. Now, we know that input devices enable users to send data into an electronic device. So basically, any device that will allow you to send data into any electronic device, not only computers, it's an input device. But because we are dealing with computers, we relate it to computers. So we say any device that enables us to send data into a computer system so if you have to define input device then we will say that an input device is a hardware component that is used to send data into a computer very simple so we must also know that it allows the user to interact with the and, and control the computer the most commonly used input devices on the computer are the keyboard and then the mouse okay so that is for this um, slide so we should know that an input device is any hardware component that is used to send data into the computer system and also um, the common ones are the keyboard and then the mouse so now what are the basic functions performed by input devices all input devices come together they have similar functions that they uh, perform so number one we say that um, they present the computer with data information that is they sent data information into the computer system all right um then also they also give computer commands and then instructions so every input device should be able to send command and instruction to the computer system. basically the keyboard uh -huh. with the help of the enter key normally we are able to uh, issue commands into the computer system for uh, processing. Okay, now input device also change human language into computer language. You know, computer doesn't understand our language. So it is the duty of the input device to convert the data into a form that the processor or the computer system can understand and process. 
Okay, so that these are the basic functions performed by input devices. So if you ask to write functions performed by input devices, here we have not mentioned just one input device. All the input devices come together. What are their core functions? So these are their core functions. Mm -hmm. So let's let's move on. So these are some of the input devices: the computer keyboard, the computer mouse, joystick, light pen, trackball, scanner, graphic tablet, microphone, magnetic ink card reader, the optical card reader, the barcode reader, the optical mark reader, and so on and so forth. There are a lot. So we will look at them one after the other. We we'll look at them one after the other. So let's first look at the keyboard. Now the keyboard is a very common general purpose input device that allows tests. For example, A, B, C, numbers, example, one, two, three, and symbols, example, the percentage, the dollar sign, the at sign, all that. The keyboard allows you to enter these uh, kind of data in the computer system. So you say the keyboard is a very common general purpose input device that allows test numbers and symbols to be entered into the computer system. So they can ask you what is, an, uh, what is a keyboard. I mean, you can write this one as your answer. So keyboard is the most common and very popular input device, which helps in inputting data to the computer. I think somebody is coming to join. Okay. All right. Hannah, are you there? Hannah is not talking. The, the, the microphone is off. Okay. All right. So the keyboard layout, sorry, the keyboard, the layout of a keyboard is like the layout of a keyboard is like that of a traditional typewriter so we've not you you guys are a bit young so we have, we've not seen typewriter before but when you go normally to the courts the courts premises you see some old men and old women using the typewriter to uh, type letters and all that and documents okay so let's look at the parts of the keyboard. Very good. So over here we have five sections of the keyboard, and normally we call them parts. So if you ask to mention or list parts of a keyboard, the first one you can write the typing keys or the typewriter keys. It's also known as the alphanumeric keys. So don't get confused. Alphanumeric keys, the typing keys or the typewriter keys. So these keys include the letters A to Z and then the digits, zero, that's what I'm saying, is alphanumeric, 0 to 9, which generally gives same layout as the typewriter. Okay. Then also, we have the numeric key pass, that is the one that have got numbers and also has got the Kesa movement around it, you can see that. Then the function key is ranging from F1 to F f1 to f12 so function keys ranging from f1 to f12 ranging from f1 to f12 on your keyboard now control keys so on the keyboard we have some keys like the end some yeah, modifier keys. I also call them the modifier keys. The end, the insert, delay, page up, page down, and all that. They are control keys or let's say the modifier keys. Yes, the modifier keys. So I think we need to circle this one out. The modifier keys. The control keys are the up, down, left, right. The four keys. So these are the modifier ones. Okay, then the special purpose, the of move block. So, if you want to talk about the up, down, left, right, key, the four keys, they are the control keys or the Kaiser keys or the um, navigation keys or direction keys. Uh, okay. Do you want to ask a question? Okay. So, all right, so let's move on. So now, keyboard layout, very important. Keyboard layout. Now, if you talk about keyboard layout, we're talking about uh, the arrangement of keys on the keyboard. You know, keyboards do not have the same kind of letter arrangement or key arrangement. The one we are using, the basic one, is a, a type of 
layout. So we look at the various layout. We have the quest layout, the quest layout, the asset layout, the debug layout, and then the coma layout. So because of time, I didn't want to bring all of them, but you can search on the internet to see how the keys are arranged. For example, the quest. This one we, we we see here on the screen. This one we see on the screen because you can see the quality here. You can see the quality here. So on the top row key, you find the quality layout. So this is what gives you the name the quality layout. So we have the quest too on the top. You see quest instead of quality. The Azeti is there, the Divorak, the Kumak, they are all there. For this one, it was named after the inventor, that is Augustus Divora. Um, so that is the inventor, Divora. Okay. Now, so these are layouts of a keyboard. So we now move on to the mouse. Mm -hmm. So the mouse is just an input device that controls the movement of the cursor or pointer on the display screen. That is the mouse. So the mouse is important for graphical user interface because user can simply point yeah you can use the mouse to point and this is the mouse pointer what you see here is the mouse pointer what you see here is that this is the mouse pointer so as you move the mouse this one moves on the screen as well so that is the mouse let's look at types of mouse that we have so we have the mechanical mouse then the optical mouse the mechanical mount and the optical mount. So you can see that we are saying that the mechanical has a rubber or metal ball on its underside that can go in all directions. So this one has a ball. So this ball here is supposed to be inside here. This ball is supposed to be inside here. This is the older type of mount. Uh, you hardly see them of late in your computer labs. Okay. Yeah, so this is the mechanical mouse and then this the one that is laser that's light you can see laser light to detect movement this is the optical mouse this is the optical mouse so we have these two types of mouse if you have to mention the types of mouse you write mechanical mouse optical mouse and if you have to explain mechanical and optical simply the mechanical has rubber or metal ball on its underside that can move in all direction and then somebody is joining let me admit the person good all right and then we also have the optical mounts with the optical mounts we are saying that it uses laser or light yes light energy laser you can see the light here to detect movement okay yeah somebody raised their hand Tete. hello hello hey, hello Tete. Tata just raise the hand. I can see the hand raised on my screen. Do you want to ask a question? <laughs> okay, she's not talking. Let's move on. All right, so now this these are the two types of mouse. Let's move on to the next input device. We don't have to waste time. So we can also... Now, another input device that you need to watch out is the touchpad or the trackpad. Now, the... The touchpad is mostly found on on what? Laptops. On laptops, good. Mostly found on laptops. So we use it instead of a mouse since it is it takes less space on a laptop. Uh, so that is the touchpad. This this area here, the user can actually control the mouse pointer or a cursor on the computer screen. So this is the touchpad. Good. So the next one is the track ball or the tracker ball. Ah. Hello? Hello. Any question? No, sir. The track ball or the tracker ball. Good. So the, the, the track ball is not moved about like a mouse. You understand? This one is normally for the newbies. You understand the You understand newbies? Uh, those with little experience with the use of the computer mount because this one is easy to use. Why are we saying that? Just a large ball and ball that the user spins. Now, tracker balls are often used by people with limited movement. So we can even say disabled people, those who can't actually move uh, maybe the hand as we 
move the hand freely. Or very young ones, since they are easier to use than the mouse. So you can know you can now see that the trackball is easy to operate than the mouse. You just have to be rolling the ball over here, the ball. So the, that this is the ball. You need to roll the ball, and then the, the movement is detected on the uh, computer screen. Okay. Oh, this microphone is off. Okay. So let's move on. Now, the touch screen is not the hand you see over there, it is the surface of the device. You see, the, it is an alternative to a separate pointing device. This one, you don't have a pointing device like the mouse or the uh, trackball. Uh, it's part of the device you are using. So you need only to touch a surface. So touch a screen, a user select item from the screen by touching the surface. It's often used for information terminals in public places like libraries or museums where mice or keyboards may be stolen or damaged. So we rather prefer that we use touch screen in public places because if you put mouse there, people can steal. So touch screens are mostly preferred in those uh, places. Okay. So now we have the joystick, the joy part, the game part. Call it any of them. Joystick, joy part. But let me sign this caution. Let me if you feel Let me sign this question. This one is the game part. Is the game part. So joystick. Hmm? Okay. So uh, don't be confused. If you see this device, don't write joystick. Write game part. If you see this one, write joystick. Uh, but they all perform the same function. That's for playing games. So they are used, mainly used for what? Playing games. So that is it. Okay. So let's move on. Now we have small joystick that can also be found on mobile phones. I think I didn't get uh, So this is a mobile phone. This is not a laptop. This is a mobile phone. Sometimes you see this small, all type of phones. You see this small pointing device here. Uh, so you see this small pointing device. This one. On mobile phone, it's also a joystick for mobile phone. Okay, so I think we can now proceed. So light pen, this pen you see. So this pen you see here, this pen, you see here is a light pen. The pen you see here is a light pen. Is that okay? Yes. Is the light pen. So this is the light pen, and then also. Uh, okay, so we are saying the light pen is a device used as a pointing device or to write on a screen of a computer. The light pens are really, uh, really used today since graphic tablets and high quality touch screens provide similar functions. So uh, that is cool. now flatbed scanner. This scanner is known as flatbed scanner, but usually when you see this in examination and then you write scanner. When you write scanner, you are you are right. But then the correct name is flat bed scanner. Why? Because you have different different types of scanners, and then you see other type of scanner very soon. So the flat bed scanner is the most common type of scanner, which is which has a glass plate on on which has a glass plate on which the item to be scanned is placed. So the item is lit up and an image of it is captured by moving scan head. So that is it. That is it. Now we have the handheld ones. Yes. So this is a handheld scanner. This is a handheld scanner. And the handheld scanners are used for entering tests and images that are less than a page wide. So this one, normally on small piece of papers, if you want to scan the image on small piece of papers, you can use this one to do that. Okay. All right, so let's continue. Let's continue. So now, webcam, web camera. Yes. So webcams normally found on laptops, but you can have a standard one. Hmm. Like what I'm using to record myself right now is attached to my laptop. But if you don't have that one on your laptop or maybe you're using a personal computer, then you need to go for this external type where you are going to fix it on the top like you can see here uh, so this one is the 
external ones. External ones where you can fix it on the top. Is that okay? Anna, are you back? Anna, are you back? Anna, are you back? Okay. So, so that is it. Okay, so, so now, usually a webcam is clipped, like I said, this year. Mm -hmm. Now, sorry, this one is microphone. I should have changed the edit. Sorry about that. This is microphone. This is microphone. It's not. Um, so, this one is ruled out. This is a microphone. It's not a scan, uh, webcam. It's an error for my editing. This one is for my side. I should have changed the name to microphone. So, microphone. The input device that converts sound into signal that can be fed into the computer. So, if you want to record your voice into the computer system for processing, you will need a microphone like this. Okay. So, now we also have optical mark reader. Now, DC, you have been told that your objective should be marked by a computer. Is that not it? Yes. Uh -huh. So this is the machine. Look at it. This is a machine known as Optical Mark Recognition, OMR. Check the abbreviations. They can, you can be asked to uh, write it in full. So you check the abbreviation. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So this is the machine. See, they put objective people inside. Then this one has been attached to the computer. You attach this one to the computer. Then the answers are fed to the computer. So the machine will just be marked. So human beings will take, it will take like one minute, to, let's say two, three minutes to mark one paper. This one will take seconds to mark one paper. And there's no error. Unless the answer that is fed onto it is wrong. That one, there will be error. But it marks as it has been asked to. So the answers are fed into the machine and then it's marked. So that is the OMR, optical mark recognition. Mm. So it's normally used by Wayek. You can see. Okay, so let's move on. So barcode reader. Yes. Barcode reader. Now this is a barcode. So you can see here. This is a barcode. And then when you go to the shopping malls like Mercom and other shopping malls, after you bought some uh, the items, they will scan. There's this kind of code attached to the items. When they scan, this device is an input device that will send the data to the computer system for processing. So that they'll be able to determine the price of the item and all that. To so a barcode scanner or a barcode reader. Okay. So now we are saying that a barcode reader is, or a scan, scanner is a hardware device capable of reading a barcode and printing out the details of the product or logging that product into a database. So there's a database system that it will read the data and then send it to that system so that the uh, data can be processed. Uh -huh. Like to know the name of the product, the, the price and all that. So that is it. So it is normally use a database management system to operate. Okay, so assessment tests. We come to input devices. So there is an assessment test for a few questions. So one, what is an input device? Uh, write the questions down. You will know. Uh, Hannah, can you hear me? Hannah, you have to write the questions down. Hannah, your microphone is off. How can you hear me? Hannah, your microphone is off. Please, Hannah. can you hear me? Hannah, yes, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So all that I was saying, you didn't hear? Somehow. All that I was saying, you didn't hear? Hannah. Yes, please, yes. You didn't hear any of them? Yes. You know what? Oh, I heard what is input device. So this is what you do, eh? Hello? Are you listening? <laughs> right now I'm giving out the assessment. <laughs> test, eh? So I'm going to 
I have recorded the video. I'm going to put it on yes. the Google Classroom. Yes. I hope you have signed up in the Google Classroom. Hello? You've signed up to the Google Classroom, right? Hello. Hannah, you've signed up to the Google Classroom. Okay. So I'll I'll upload okay. the video there so you can go and watch it. Eh? Then you can answer the questions here for me. Yes, please. So number one. What is an input yes, device? Please. Then two, identify and list input devices. <laughs> Outline three functions performed by input devices. So list ten. This question cancel it out. Cancel this question out. It has been cancelled, right? So what is an input device? Outline three okay. functions performed by input devices. Okay. So this is a question. This is a question. Then list ten input devices. So these are your questions. But you can go and uh, play back the video. I will be uploading it in the Google Classroom uh, today. Most of the people couldn't join. I don't know why. I don't know why because it's Sunday. But then we'll be having the next class. So next class is coming to you. God willing, this Wednesday I'll announce it. We'll be looking at our two devices. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you, what, what would you copy the questions? Copy the questions. The questions are here. Yes. When you finish answering, you can, you can. Please, I'll finish. Yeah, you can send them to me by WhatsApp. If you have any questions, you can ask before I end the discussion. Question time. Please, no question. Are you sure? E Emily, yes. Last. Any yes, question? Yes. No, sir. All right, so thank you for your audience, and then um, we'll be looking at two devices going on Wednesday. I'll be giving the link before, and then the, the, the password and everything before time. All right, I'm expecting the assignment I, I just gave right yes. now, so get back to work. All right. Yes, sir. I know you feel like you want me, and I guess in a way you do.